Hey, what's going on everybody? Full Furniture today bringing y'all a Clash Mini video and in today's video I'm going to be going over my balance change wish list for the next season. Supposedly we should be getting a balance change when the season resets, so probably in about uh, two weeks-ish maybe. Um, but we're going to talk about what I would want for the balance changes. So for the change that I would like, I would like to just see Countess be obtainable as a free-to-play player. So I was going to do it for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. No, I'm just kidding. That's not it. Um, but hit that subscribe button. Anyway, now let's hop into the real balance changes. All right. So for the first balance change, I would like to see a slight change to the Barbarian King, specifically to its third ability. This is the current third ability. This is what makes the Barbarian King so oppressive. So I'd like to see this tweaked a little bit and actually have a new third ability. Uh, so replace the invincibility in the invulnerable and replace it with something called protector. Once the Barbarian King drops below 50% HP, it will gain an eight HP shield for four seconds. At level two, the duration will increase by two seconds. At level three, the HP of the shield will increase by four. And then at level four, it will grant it to the closest allies. So basically at max level for the Barbarian King, it would gain a 12 HP shield for six seconds, also granting that 12 HP shield for six seconds to the closest ally. If we're looking at kind of the lore of the Barbarian King, specifically within Clash of Clans, he kind of gives a buff and like a morale to um, the Barbarians that he summons in. So I'm kind of thinking of like, what is that kind of like, hurrah, let's finish this battle. And that would be a protector ability, which also grants to a nearby ally, including the rage um, that he in the attack bonus that he gives to his current allies. So his his whole kit would basically become supporting um, the units. So that way, at that certain point in battle, he kind of gives that hurrah and pushes the units through to the finish line. I think this would be much more fitting for the Barbarian King. If you don't agree with this change, let me know down in the comment section below. These are just my opinions, obviously. So I'd love to hear yours from the community as well. Next up, I would really like to see a change to the world champion. I would like to see its base HP increased by one, so it has a little bit more survivability, and then also increase its base hit per second by 0.5. I don't know what it actually currently is, but basically at max level, it would have 19 HP and 1.25 hits per second. I think that would be a really good change to the world champion. I think her kit's pretty good right now. All right, next up for the monk, uh, this is going to be an interesting one, so I'm curious to see what the community's take on this is. Uh, I'd like to see the monk's energy cost reduced to 8 from 9, but I'd like to give it a new second ability. This has been very controversial with the monk, and I finally thought of something that might be pretty interesting for it. Um, so I'm curious to see what everybody thinks. So, get rid of this mystic posture. It's changed. It's gone. Um, its new second ability would be called spiritual force or whatever. When, it KOs an enemy, when the monk KOs an enemy, the closest enemy troop to the monk so the next closest enemy trip to the monk becomes silenced for two seconds at level two duration increases by one second level three plus one second duration and then level four it ga gains the ko ability for itself so basically at max level when the monk ko's an enemy the close the next closest enemy troop to the monk would be silenced for four seconds and then when the monk gets ko'd um whatever the closest enemy to the monk was when it gets KO'd, that enemy would become silenced for four seconds. So it's basically like it gives a reward for AOing an enemy with the monk in terms of silencing the next enemy, or if the monk gets KO'd itself, then it still silences an enemy, preventing it from using its uh, abilities. Let me know what you think of this down in the comment section below, but I think this kind of keeps the like unique aspect of the monk's silence, but kind of reduces its like rng ability where it's like it's a clash ability it affects the whole row and then monk instead of becoming a high risk high reward becomes more of a generalized specific unit now why is the energy cost getting reduced because obviously with the mystic posture it would gain plus four energy before um so now it's only source of energy would be from uh from boast with its respectability so that's why i said reduce the energy cost slightly because it's getting less energy overall but it would still get energy upon ko with that boast ability so i think it'd be really cool um to kind of have that so have its uh have this basic ability for level two become boast um when it ko's and then the level four ability would be that same ability that was a boast also becomes a ko ability for the monk let me know what you think of this down in the comment section below 
for the Archer Queen, uh, just I would just like to see the bug fix. Right now, it's uh, Queen's Gambit Super only lasts for three seconds instead of four seconds, like it said. Um, so just let it be four seconds, let the Queen be playable, and then we can actually figure out if the Queen needs to be buffed or nerfed, whatever it might be. And then pretty much the same thing for the Nature Born. I'd really like to see the Nature Born's ability um, or its super energy cost in the human form be increased to six from five. And then just fix its deer form bug because right now uh on forest power the deer form uh the plus one attack only lasts for two seconds instead of six seconds so fix that let it last for six seconds and then just change the energy to cast its super in the human form up to six and leave the deer form at 10. i think that's going to be beneficial for nature born it makes her human form less oppressive and with the bug fix for the deer form maybe we can see how good nature born actually is for the minis, I would like to see Archer's third ability rush uh, be have its uh, hit speed percentage gained reduced to 20 from 35. So it would gain 20% hit speed for four seconds when receiving an attack buff and can stack. This will help quite a bit because that's 15% that's less per stack than it was getting before. And I think that would make Archer a lot less oppressive, but still kind of keep it in the meta and keep its current kit. Next up is the Barbarian. I would like to see the base hit speed reduced from the Barbarian to 0.5 from 0.6. I think it just kind of ramps up too quickly, and I think it needs a slight nerf to its uh, attack speed. So the hit per second, base hit per second reduced to 0.5 would make its max 0.8 instead of 0.9. For the Dart Goblin, I would like to see its Dart Master cap at 15 stacks. Currently, the Barbarian caps at 15 stacks, the Valkyrie caps at 15 stacks. The Dark Goblin is the only thing that doesn't cap, and with the vents introduced and having the much bigger board, Dark Goblin with that infinite um, stack is so oppressive, especially on that game mode specifically. So if events are going to kind of be in for the long run, then I think this change is needed, and this will also help kind of slightly nerf it in uh, the basic board as well. So just cap it at 15 instead of infinite, maybe even 20, I don't know, but just put a cap on it. I think that'll help fix the issue. Fisherman, this is a bit of a big one, and this is something I've wanted to kind of see with the Fisherman for a while, so stick with me on this. So the damage per hit will be reduced to 1 from 2, and its base hit per second is going to be increased to 0.7 from 0.5, and then have the up uh, hit per second upgrade be reduced to 0.1 from 0.5. So basically at max level... Uh, the hit per second will be one hit per second, and it does one damage. And then have Hook become a super instead of a clash ability, and the cast to super would be 10 energy, and it would target the furthest enemy. And the Fisherman would only be able to get energy when it hits a unit, not when it receives hits. So the first ability is going to stay Heavy Hook, but its uh, stun duration is going to be plus 2 seconds instead of plus 3 seconds. Fish growth is going to be moved to the second slot, and it'll be a it'll become a boast ability, and will gain 30% attack speed increase instead of the current 40. And then it's going to get a new third ability called Fish Lap, and it'll be a KO ability. And the unit that KOs the fisherman will be stunned for two seconds. So basically, when the fisherman dies, Fish Lap hits the unit that killed it and stuns that unit for two seconds. Uh, I think this would make Fisherman a lot more viable because it's uh, it's not only useful at the start of a match, and if you happen to miss, it kind of makes Fisherman a more versatile unit within the game and not really just a unit that you have at the start of the match, and then it's basically just kind of there. Um, so I think this would be a really interesting change for the Fisherman, and the reason its energy to cast is so high is because it's targeting the furthest ally, which could ultimately change the entire tide of a game so i think 10 energy to cast and being at max level having one hit per second takes 10 seconds to get the energy for it that's about a third of the round i think by that time the outcome is going to be can fisherman turn the tide or is it going to be set in the ways of the opponent and things like that so i think that 10 energy is pretty good and then of course paired with an e-wiz or something where or nature born where it grants energy for overhealing and things like that uh, or that you was with the clash ability granting energy at the start it kind of helps mitigate it so that it doesn't you're you don't get the super as quickly with the fisherman so i think this would be a really cool change for fisherman let me know what you think down in the comment section below
Next up, we have the Electro Wizard. I'd like to see the Electro Wizard's base ability, the Zap, have the stun reduced to point uh, to 1.5 seconds instead of 2 seconds. So this way, uh, when you pair it with the Electrocute, it stuns for 3 seconds total instead of 3.5 seconds total. And then I would also like to see its energy cost increase to 5 to help kind of pair with the Clash ability that it gets at the start, but then also paired with the Nature Born, um, it'll take... Um, It'll still take that two ticks to kind of get over, but its base, uh, it won't be able to get its energy or its super off as quickly. It still, it would need an extra attack to basically do that. Except for the Royal Ghost, every time I make one of these balance change wish lists, I've talked about the Royal Ghost, and I'm gonna say it again, but I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit. Maybe Clash Mini Team will actually listen and see that Royal Ghost is extremely oppressive at three stars. I know it's 16 costs to send it, but it is just so oppressive. And it's so it's it's such a feels bad to see Rogo so freaking dominant. So here's my proposal for it: have the base hit per second increase to 0.7, and then reduce its upgraded hit per second to 0.1. So currently, when you max out a Rogo, it has 1.2 hits per second. With this new feature, it would have the Rogo max be one hit per second, but the base hit per second is actually 0.1 higher which in turn would make the Royal Ghost better early game and a little bit worse late game. I think that provides a really good balance for the Royal Ghost because then it's at level one, it doesn't, it's, it's not really as good um, or le even level two. Like when you get that first upgrade with the, with the ghosty, I think it would really change the tide of how Royal Ghost is played at earlier stages and also make it less oppressive at later stages. So I'd really like to see this kind of change implemented for the Royal Ghost. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Next up for the Witch, I think just increase its energy cost to five from three. Obviously paired with Nature Born, paired with World Champion. It is very strong right now, um, especially in the event mode. So I think just increasing its energy cost would make it a little bit better. Next up for the Bandit. Yes, I know we've only had the Bandit for a few days. So like, full, what are you talking about? Why do you want to see a change to the Bandit? After playing with the Bandit for pretty much every single game I've played since it came out Saturday night, um, the Bandit is extremely hit or miss. What it comes down to right now is who gets their Bandit super off first, but then also the fact that Bandit is extremely weak early game and much more strong late game. So I'd like to see something that kind of introduces it uh, into the Bandit so that it's a little bit better early game, still kind of strong late game, and I don't know... I. I don't really know how to fix the like who supers first kind of situation yet, but this is what I got so far for the bandit. So for its base ability, it's derive. I would like to see it absorb three energy instead of two energy. So right now it deals two damage and absorbs two energy. I'd like to see it deal two damage and absorb three energy and then change this derive hard ability. So make uh, the days move to the first ability make the destroy, move to the second ability, and then introduce a new third ability called Stealth Walk, and this will make the bandit become invisible for three seconds at the start of a match. This way, your bandit doesn't get targeted. You can choose to kind of do that, uh, or you can choose to make your bandit invisible and not get targeted. Sometimes, depending on your strategy, it's more beneficial to have the bandit targeted, so that way you can kind of get it super quicker. But then this will also, I think, kind of help the it could potentially help it's kind of who gets off first because then instead of getting four energy it's only getting three energy consistently and you can kind of play it off and see what's the best strategy going to be with the bandit so let me know what you think of that change for the bandit down in the comment section below and also i think having the bandit as like having that third ability be played first where it gets a self walk could also be a little bit of a buff to the bandit early game because it's not targetable um it's not as fragile and I think it would be a huge change for the bandits. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And then for the gizmos, I would love to see a change where gizmos are not playable in round one. Obviously, Barbarian King 2 Elixir is dominating the meta right now. And of course, with any 2 Elixir, it is extremely unfair and purely luck based, depending on if it, if somebody is able to get two, if it's three, two Elixir minis of the same kind in their shop, purely luck based. It, shouldn't impact a game like that because gizmo round one can be the absolute difference maker whether it's elixir pump uh mucha punt depending on the matchup of course but elixir pump like specifically being played in round one is just insanely broken so just don't let gizmos be played in round one i think just introduce that cap 
very easy to understand. Gizmos are playable starting in round two, and that's perfectly fine. Then the only other change I would like to see right now um, for the sauna, once the unit comes out in the sauna, the buff that it gets will only last for five seconds. Currently, it's its entire duration. I think it needs to be reduced so that the buff only lasts for five seconds. This would make Gizmo a lot less oppressive and have the person who's not who's fighting against the Gizmo actually have a fighting chance. Because if you get an E-Wiz into the Gizmo or into the sauna and then it's actually able to get out of the sauna, then the person with the E-Wiz pretty much wins because it's just infinite stuns for days. So it's very oppressive. It's extremely strong. Kind of same thing with Magic Archer. It just continuously gets shots off. It's insanely strong. It needs to be toned down a little bit. So I think just making the unit that comes out of the sauna only last for five seconds and then it kind of just goes back to normal. So it's basically like a resurrection, like it cooked in there for a minute, like let him cook, get in there, get out, do the damage that you need to. And then it goes and then it reverts to its original form. I think that's perfectly fair. Uh, and I think that would still have the sauna still be used, but obviously it's just not as oppressive. And it's just if a unit happens to come out of the sauna, it's not a guaranteed, oh, well, I lost kind of thing. So that's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the changes I've suggested down in the comment section below. And to the Clash Mini team, if you're watching this video, hopefully this helps you for the upcoming balance changes or maybe the balance changes that we might see in June. Whatever it might be, hopefully this helps. So that's going to do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, share for more content, and don't forget to turn that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later. Peace out.